Time now for a look at the day's top business news. And for that, I'm joined here in the studio by Brian Quinn from the France 24 Business Desk. Uh, Brian, you're going to be starting with some new headaches at Tesla as the electric car maker is accused of firing workers for attempting to unionize. Indeed, Allison. Labor organizers in the city of Buffalo, New York, say Tesla fired more than 30 people there in a bid to head off a unionization drive. The electric car maker employs roughly 2,000 people at its Buffalo facility. The workers in question were part of the company's autopilot labeling team. Tesla is insisting that their layoffs were due to poor performance and that the decision had been made prior to the union push. U.S. labor regulators have already cited Tesla for violating labor rules during an organizing effort at a California facility. The latest news comes as the company is recalling more than 360,000 cars in the U.S. under pressure from safety regulators. They say Tesla's full self-driving beta feature is unsafe as it can behave erratically in intersections as well as brake speed limits. That recall is actually an over-the-air software update. Some Tesla drivers, though, say they're not surprised. Construction is not good. You know, if it's a, a pretty standard road, it's actually very good. But you get into a situation where it's a little bit um, not as uh, refined where you're driving, it's not great. <laughs> to Portugal next, where the government has rolled out a new 900 million euro package to try and stem a rapid rise in housing costs. Measures include increasing housing supply by having the government lease vacant houses directly from landlords to put them on the rental market. Regulations on rent increases are also planned, as well as a ban on new licenses for Airbnb-style short-term holiday rentals. Portugal is one of the poorest countries in Western Europe, but housing costs there have skyrocketed in recent years. Average rents in Lisbon rose by more than 35% in 2022 alone. Perhaps the key plank in the government's plan, though, is an end to the country's so-called Golden Visa program, which granted European passports to foreign real estate investors. Take a listen to the Portuguese prime minister here. No one can ignore the impact on the housing market, whether it be from the increase of interest rates or from the increase of market rent prices. From the around 11,000 golden visas granted until now, over 9,000 were solely and exclusively for real estate investment. Very low job creation, to not say no, and very low contribution to other activities. Time now for a check-in on the day's trading action so far. Asian indexes in the red on Friday as they follow Wall Street's losing Thursday session. Investors are looking at an unexpected rise for wholesale prices in the U.S. as a sign that the Federal Reserve there is likely to keep raising interest rates for the foreseeable future. Shares in Chinese tech investment firm China Renaissance Holdings are down around 30 percent in Hong Kong as the company says that it is unable to contact its CEO Bao Fan. That's raising fears of a renewed crackdown on the Chinese tech sector by Beijing. The Hong Kong uh, Hang Seng is down over 1.1 percent ahead of the closing bell there. Next, German airports are expecting major travel disruptions on Friday. Trade unions are calling for a 24-hour strike at seven different airports, demanding higher pay. The latest labor action comes at the end of what has already been a dramatic week for German carrier Lufthansa after an IT systems failure caused huge delays and a raft of flight cancellations on Wednesday. Oliver Ferry has the details. Germany braces itself for travel disruption on Friday, with labour unions representing security and ground staff calling strikes at seven airports. The airports affected include Frankfurt, the country's biggest, Stuttgart, Hamburg, Dortmund, Hanover, Munich and Bremen. Munich in particular is hard as hit, with regular operations grounded for 25 hours from midnight on Thursday. The airport CEO expects it to play havoc with travel plans. This is for us a very difficult and black day from an economic and especially operational point of view. Over 90,000 passengers were due to fly on this day. And above all, it's the start of the Bavarian Carnival holidays, which for me is very unfair and excessive. One thing that won't be affected is the Munich Security Conference, which runs from Friday to Sunday. Operations will be maintained, as they will be for relief and emergency flights. 
the union is demanding a pay rise of 10.5% for its members to counter the effects of high inflation. The strike follows a day of chaos on Wednesday for the German national carrier Lufthansa, which was roiled by mass flight delays and cancellations due to an IT systems failure caused by construction at Frankfurt Airport. Finally for business, more legal trouble in the crypto sector. The U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission has charged Terraform Labs and its founder, Do Kwon, with orchestrating what the regulator calls a multi-billion dollar crypto asset securities fraud. Singapore-based Terraform Labs is the company behind the Terra Luna stablecoin system, which collapsed last May, wiping out more than $40 billion in investor holdings. The SEC says Quan and Terraform misled investors about the stability of the Terra Luna ecosystem as they raised billions for what they called unregistered crypto transactions. The Terra Luna death spiral was a key trigger for a worldwide sell-off in the crypto sector and would eventually lead to the spectacular implosion of the FTX crypto exchange late last year. Kwon already facing fraud and security charges in his native South Korea. He's believed to be hiding out in Serbia. Just the latest in a long stretch of uh, legal troubles in the crypto sector. Uh, risky business there. In it always has it been. It certainly often. is, Brian. It makes me feel better for not investing mm -hmm. in crypto, yes. which yeah. one might regret. Very but astute. Not after that. Perhaps, yes. Brian, thank you very much for that business update. That's France 24's Brian Quinn.